today uh, to meet a lot of you folk and hopefully uh, today many of you will put your name and uh, phone number in up on a list so that we can stay in contact with you by uh, knowing more things about what Fraser does in the future. So just uh, as a bit of a quick introduction, I'll tell you what's happening. Fraser will be speaking in about a minute or two. I'll just give you a little bit of a rundown on who Fraser is and what it's been doing just quickly. Then we'll open it up for questions and uh, then when we think we've answered enough of those questions, we'll wind it up. But I have a right, roving microphone so I'll be able to come around, you put your hand up at the end and say, yep, I want to ask a question and I'll come over to you and ask it and see how we go. Okay, so we'll, we'll check and see how we go. Hopefully it'll be a good friendly uh, meeting and uh, everyone who's got a good serious question will get it answered. So Fraser has come from a background where he's lived in Western Queensland between Winton and Richmond. He has a cattle property. Didn't see much future in working in uh, farming, so he started working in uh, pubs. So he's owned uh, 30 odd different pubs or managed them, mostly around Queensland. Uh, he's also built and sold aeroplanes. He flies an aeroplane. Just recently we went around North Queensland and uh, flew for six days talking to people and uh, looking at dam sites. So we uh, did a few things with uh, meeting people in the outback and got a very good reaction there. So Fraser, as you know, has been um, very strong on his views. He likes to uh, say what he thinks and he um, obviously resonates with a lot of people because of that. And a lot of his views are just from the people that he's lived with out in the bush, uh, off properties, uh, people who are workers and uh, tradies and things like that, people he's had in the pub. He knows what people have been thinking for years. So that's just what he's saying. There's no, nothing else about him that you just get what you get with Fraser. So I'd like to introduce to you now, Senator Fraser Annie. Put your hands together. Thank you very much and um, thanks very much for coming. And before we start, I'd like to thank John and Brenton who uh, were good enough and, and had enough courage to uh, let us use this um, nice warehouse studio. Uh, the uh, different ones have told them that they shouldn't let me in here, uh, but they had enough uh, ticket to, to allow us to come here today. So thanks to those two guys. <coughs> Um, I'll just, um, just start off by telling you where the party stands right now. Um, uh, we, we registered it, uh, we started the process a couple of months ago, uh, and then it's 30 days for objections. Uh, all the objections have been in. They did hold up three objections for two weeks, which has slowed us down a little bit. I don't know whether it was deliberate or not, but anyway, that was what the AEC did. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're hoping that we'll have it registered by the 21st of this month is, is uh, the date it should be registered. And the reason for registering a party, I, I guess you know, is uh, without being in a party, you can't have your name above the line. Uh, you'll be below the line on the Senate ticket and you're in there with another 150 people. So it's very hard to get most people vote above the line. So that's why we started a party. And, uh, you know, as I say, hopefully registered in the next week or so. Apart from that, uh, what I stand for, I, I think most people know, you know, um, I'm getting a lot of criticism now, I don't know why, over what happened in uh, uh, New Zealand yesterday. Uh, you know, this uh, guy attacking these people, which is none of us here, and uh, certainly I don't condone. I've never advocated violence against anyone, and um, he's done the wrong thing. Uh, but, you know, you know, what I did say is that where you have countries where you bring a lot of Muslims into the country, um, if we learn from history, like, you know, United Kingdom and France and Belgium and, and uh, you know, different Sweden, uh, invariably you have, you have problems and, uh, you know, it's usually uh, Muslims attacking uh, the citizens, but uh, unfortunately this, this guy's gone a bit crazy and done the opposite. Um, I, I said to some people the other day, you know, when I was being interviewed, that. Not many people know that in the last 30 days there have been 122 terrorist attacks around the world um, in 21 countries, killing 857 people. Uh, there's not a lot of outcry over that. But for some reason we're also used to having uh, innocent people being murdered on our streets uh, by these lunatics um, that we get used to it, I guess. And certainly the left-wing media don't want to talk about it. 
they, they won't highlight it at all. It's just part of life, apparently. Uh, but they're, you know, they're outraged when somebody eventually cracks and does something mad like they did yesterday. Um, some of the things uh, I stand for is, you know, we need to rebuild this country. Uh, we haven't had a, an infrastructure project in this country in 40 odd years. Uh, the Snow River Scheme was a big infrastructure project. We should have been doing those uh, ever since. And um, Leon and I, like Leon was just saying, we just flew five and a half thousand kilometres around Queensland looking at dam sites where we can dam rivers and channel them inland. Uh, we can make Australia the food bowl of the world. We can create a massive amount of wealth with it. Uh, we can do a the Murray Darling scheme multiplied by at least three. Murray Darling uh, produces $22 billion a year for our economy. So we could be around $66, $70, $70 billion a year going into the economy and creating a huge amount of jobs. Uh, so we have the best uh, soil in the world. We have the most water pretty much in the world in North Queensland. All we have to do is put the two together, just like the Romans did 2,300 years ago. And the the, um, the uh, uh, Europeans have been doing for hundreds of years, watering their land. Uh, so you know that, that's one of the things that I sort of have been working hard for in the Senate. Uh, the other thing is uh, we have to get out of the United Nations. That's a, a despotic group of uh, grubs, and uh, they're dictating terms to us. Um, <laughs> Out of, um, there's 193 nations represented there. 56% of those countries that are represented in the United Nations are either despotic dictatorships or Muslim countries. And they're telling us on a daily basis what we should be doing and who, who we should be bringing into this country and where we should be sending our money, sorry, your money, taxpayers' money. So, um, you know, I just uh, get a little bit uh, annoyed with people like Mr. Morrison who uh, condemned me the other day and uh, he'd be probably one of the biggest hypocrites uh, because he's, he's quite happy to send $43.8 million to the Palestinian Authority and $50 million to the Pakistanis. Both those people uh, are paying for terrorists. Uh, the Pakistanis are happy for them uh, to pay these people to go into India and uh, commit uh, you know, terrorist acts, killing innocent Indians. Uh, we're funding those people, we're funding that government. We're funding the Palestinian Authority with your taxpayers' dollars to the, to the tune of 43.8 million, and they use it for pay to slay. So pay to slay is if you go, if a Palestinian goes into Israel and kills some innocent people, women and children, and they go to jail and they get, they get paid well ever they're in jail, and they get paid a princely sum. So um, for him to attack me is, uh, a bit uh, hypocritical, I thought, but uh, that's what they do. The Turnbull as well, but then he's a non-event anyway. He was a traitor to this country, as far as I'm concerned. But um, yeah, so uh, those are the things. That the foreign aid we sent 360 million to Indonesia just recently, and they bought a lot of attack helicopters. Excuse me. So um, uh, that money could have been well used here. Uh, our pensioners are. Probably uh, in the OECD, there's 35% of our pensioners are living below the poverty line. Um, that's wrong, you know, we could have saved, kept that money and looked after them. As far as the refugees go, or the fake refugees, <coughs> excuse me, um, those people have crossed a lot of countries to get here. A lot of countries that could have given them refuge. That's what a refugee is, there's somebody looking for, to, you know, to avoid being persecuted. And so they come all the way down here to Australia, one, because we have the most generous welfare system and we look after them very well. But they've had their refuge and a lot of the times they're running away from their battles, you know, uh, with the ISIS and other despotic um, Islamic groups. So Australians and Americans and others have sent their troops over there uh, to fight their battles. Well, we fought their battle and um, good Australians died over there. Uh, but we've beaten ISIS, so, so ISIS is finished, so it's safe for them to go back. So what I say is, you know, if you've had your refuge and we've kept you from having to get uh, involved in your own battle, uh, you can go home and help rebuild your country. Uh, that also applies to the Sudanese. 
Uh, Sudan is now stable. Um, it's, uh, the civil war is pretty much over, so it's a safe place to go back to, so it's time to go back. You know, if you take a neighbour in whose house was destroyed by fire or whatever and, and, and he rebuilds his house, well then he goes home again. But these people like to stay, unfortunately, and um, so I think we've got to encourage them to get back to their homeland where they, uh, their loved ones are and uh, help rebuild their homeland. Um, with, uh, let me think, what else have I got to talk about? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, uh, that, that problem, by the way, you know, the, the refugee problem is costing us both ways. One, we're paying for them here, and two, we're paying for them, uh, we're paying the price of looking, having our army over there. <coughs> Excuse me. I run out of uh, voice after a while. So, yeah, those, those are the things. So, it's time to give the Australian taxpayer a bit of a break. Uh, you know, and, and uh, save this, this sort of money. But if you'd like to uh, ask any questions on any subject, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, so put your hand up if you've got a question and I'll come around and just uh, <coughs> answer it. Yep. Okay. What was the, uh, the government plan with Palestine? Uh, so, say that again? What was the government's just... What was the government's justification for sending the money to Pakistan and Palestine? Uh, justification, they, um, <coughs> they've all been, uh, you've got three uh, parties here. It's a, we've got a left-wing party, a socialist party, and a communist party, and they're running this country. And their justification is that the United Nations are telling them to send the money there. Just like the United Nations are telling us who we should bring into this country. So um, pretty much your three parties, the Labor, Liberal and Greens, have sold us out pretty much to the United Nations. Okay. Yeah, the Lima Agreement was the start of it. That was Gough Whitlam who brought that in. And um, <coughs> that, that uh, effectively put 30% of our, our manufacturing offshore in the third world countries. And the idea was to prop up the third world country and then we'd buy the rubbish that they built back here. That's it, now it's 90%. Um, but sorry, go ahead, dear. Oh, hey, uh, do you think the reason why people were outraged by what you said is because uh, rather than focus on the tragedy, um, everyone's jumping on to politicise it? Mm -hmm. uh, possibly. I've, I've been saying the same thing for since I've been in Parliament, so I haven't said anything different. Uh, I agree that it was a tragedy and it was a, the guy shouldn't have done it. It was a, a horror to all of us, uh, murdering anyone. Um, but, uh, you know, if people think it's politicised, then that's up to them. Any other questions? Put your hand. Got a good question? So, yep. Yeah, uh, Communist China has a great hold on our borders. I mean, um, Morrison and um, Turtle call them ports, but they are in fact borders. Uh, what's your priority on giving those back? Because, and our infrastructure, which China is only a great deal of us. Sorry. Communist China is uh, a little great deal of that. Yeah, um, good question he's asking about you know, the Chinese. Um, we have three really big threats right now, which is why I talk about them a fair bit, and that's China buying up our country and our ports and our infrastructure, uh, the Muslim immigration, black African immigration, and also uh, the socialised, becoming a socialist country. Uh, I, I, it's beyond me why the left wing media want to have a socialist country uh, and all the other bleeding hearts who talk about it all the time. Um, I'll just give you an example. Um, in uh, 30 years ago, uh, Venezuela was the fourth largest economy in the world. Uh, and 2012, they were disarmed by their own government. Uh, by 2016, the Venezuelans had learned how to eat cats and dogs because they were starving to death. And today they're being shot while they're trying to get some of that aid that Trump sent down there. So um, if that's what these people want this country to look like, uh, it's just beyond belief as far as I'm concerned. I can't see, uh, I'd hate to see Australia as a Venezuela, but that's the way we're going. So those three battles we've got to fight. Um, and, and hopefully we can win. And the only way we can do it is by getting good um, conservatives on the cross benches and eventually get this or another party, I don't mind which, as long as we have a conservative alternative to the three left-wing parties we've got now. Afternoon, Senator. I'm Afternoon. just wondering about the Australian Constitution, the original Constitution, is there any any chance of getting that uh, re-established again? 
Um, I've had lots of talks about this. I'd love to see it happen. Our constitution, your right, has been destroyed. Um, uh, you know, so how we'll get it back again? Uh, we have to have enough political will in Parliament to do it. Uh, right now, we have you know uh, judges who are usurping the constitution, and, um, and has been for, uh, they have been for a long time. Yeah, I've got two questions. Yep. Why you don't use the word Westernophobia in Parliament? Western. Westernophobia. Oh, yeah. It counters Islamophobia. They use it all the time. Yep. And the white shame. I'm getting a bit tired of it. Me you too. know, we're supposed to be ashamed of being bloody white. That's bullshit. I agree with you 100%. The gentleman's talking about white shame. And for some reason, we're all supposed to apologise for being white. Um, our forefathers built a beautiful country, uh, and, and as did all of us here, and uh, for some reason we've got to be ashamed of that, and um, I, I can't believe that anyone would be. Um, it's funny in this world, you know, uh, whites are only 8% of the world's population, but everyone else is a minority. I'm not sure how that happens, but that, that happens. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not interested in apologising for being white. I'm quite proud of it. Uh, being Australian, and uh, somebody said, oh, you're a nationalist. I said, yes, I am. You know, I, I, is it, apparently that's a dirty word. <laughs> so, uh, I, I think a nationalist is just somebody who loves their country and would like to see Australian, uh, Australia for Australians, you know, and uh, you know, have them back at work again and uh, doing well, but now everyone is struggling because of this uh, globalisation bullshit that's coming out of the United Nations. And uh, uh, so, uh, I'd like to see our country staying a sovereign country. And the only way we can do that is by locking our borders to some of these people who are intent on destroying them. Um, I don't know if I said this, but 52 nations around this world were once Christian, uh, Hindu, uh, or Buddhist, and those 52 countries now are all. Islamic nations, and the only thing that's happening for those Christians, Hindus, and Buddhists is they're being slaughtered in their countries that used to be their country. So uh, we, we've got to stop it. Hi, Senator. Thanks for coming. Um, it's a two-part question. Will you be running candidates in Victoria? And if not, will you provide a how to vote uh, card on, on Facebook or other platforms? Yep. Vote uh, to those. Uh, Definitely running candidates here. Already have a really good Senate candidate here. Uh, and by the way, a lot of good people are coming out of the woodwork. People who would never normally run for politics. Uh, in good times, you get people who want to be career politicians. In the hard times, you start to get people who are the real people. And uh, the gentleman who's going to be probably running here is a, a Qantas airline pilot, international airliner and he has cattle properties, so he's got all the work he needs and all the money he needs, so he doesn't need this job. 80% <coughs> of the people, 85% of the people in the room that I sit in have never had a real job. They're there for the, for the long haul, and they'll vote whichever way their bloody party tells them to. And um, you know, whether they believe it, uh, they'll vote against their conscience and they'll vote against uh, what their constituents want. And I see it time and time again, uh, even the ones who tell you that they're conservative, <coughs> they're not, uh, a lot of the times, what they say on TV, on Paul Murray or on Boulder or whatever else they get on, is not how they vote in the Senate. I'll send a photo around in a minute, you can have a look, <coughs> of uh, me on one side of the Senate and the whole Senate on the other side. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it didn't, didn't worry me much, but, uh, and that was the conservative guys, and that was to withhold the welfare from not only the immigrants but also the fake refugees. The bill was um, stop the immigrants getting their access to the welfare for another year. And I put an amendment to the bill to uh, make include the fake refugees because they're the ones who are costing us money. They never get a bloody job, 90% of them. And uh, they all voted against it. And even the Conservatives who said they're Conservatives. But uh, yeah, we will definitely have um, people standing for the Senate and, and some lower house seats in, in every state. I'm not sure how many, because we've only got a very short amount of time. Uh, so any, any decent people you know who would like to try and run for a lower house seat, definitely get in contact with us or encourage uh, somebody to do it. Um, first of all, uh, Ms. Redding, I just wanted to say thank you for coming down to Victoria, despite the electric being all the way up in Queensland. Um, 
And uh, I also wanted to say um, thank you for not caving into the political pressure to apologise or anything else like that. And I wanted to give you a round of applause for being the only decent politician out there. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for that. And um, yeah, somebody said, uh, you know, yeah, does it worry you? You know, so many people are attacking me. And um, I've run some of the roughest pubs in Queensland, so uh, some of the bedwetters in Parliament don't worry. <laughs> G'day, Senator. Yeah. I'd also like to say thank you for having the balls to say what you said. I slightly disagree with the timing of it, unfortunately, um, but sometimes you just need to seize, seize the day and just make the most of the opportunity. And it did take a lot of balls for you to say what you said, and I, I really appreciate you doing it, and I hope more politicians do the same thing, because I'm all for, for I'm by far not a racist at all, some of my best friends and my loved ones are all from all different countries, but cultural diversity does not unite us, it divides us. And they must, other cultures must assimilate to Australian values, Western values, and if not, it's just gonna divide us. Assimilate, please, and integrate. We've got no problem with any, any, other, any other person from any other country, but thank you again. You're welcome. And, uh... Just on that, I agree with you. Um, we've had you know, the Greeks came here, the Italians here, uh, the, the Sikhs and the Vietnamese and Indians, all sorts of races have come here and they've got in and helped us build the country and happy as I could be with them. The people that I particularly don't want here are the people who want to attack us in the streets when they're living on our welfare. Um, and they're, they're the people that have disrupted and destroyed uh, 52 other countries around the world. Uh, so if, if we're stupid enough to let it keep happening and think that we're going to get a different result, then that's, I think, the first sign of that. So, yeah. Thank you. Yep. What are you doing seeing this come to Victoria now and Australia? Yep. Um, my biggest concern is not the African Grand Prime, however, it's the it's the left using our children on matters such as climate change and sexual indoctrination of the LGBTIQ. <laughs> okay, brother. Okay. I'm a big advocate. Mm -hmm. But both of us stand against LGBTIQ activism and how it affects kids. Good one. Good one. And by the way, um, my question to you is yep. today, how do you plan to protect the nuclear family in Victoria and in your party and to stop the indoctrination of our kids so that we can actually grow the next uh, generation for Australia so that we don't lose our identity like I've seen my country lose its identity and you have no idea what that's like. I agree with you. Thank you. Um, just on the South African thing for a start off, uh, I'm not going to but I have a, a bill I put or a motion in Parliament to get uh, 10,000 emergency visas for South African farmers who are being, white South Africans who are being slaughtered simply because of their race and because they have built something as opposed to the people who are attacking them and slaughtering them on a daily basis. And I know most of you have never seen the photos, I get them thousands of them every week from uh, South African farmers. Uh, showing me what's happened. I mean, uh, pouring boiling water down a four-year-old child's neck to kill him and then uh, dismembering a mother and it's horrendous stuff and I've got the photos and uh, you don't want to see them. And they're the people who are being slaughtered and there's no outcry at all, uh, you know, and they're being slaughtered because they're white. Pardon? Um, so, you know, what I'm trying to do is, and the South Africans, by the way, are the best settlers you could ever have. Uh, they've got the same values as we do, they're hard working, they're great farmers, they're great uh, people, they get jobs as soon as they get here. The only place you'll never find them is on the welfare lines. But, uh, so on that, you know, I agree, our family units are being destroyed with the safe schools bullshit. Um, you know, that, that's a horrendous thing that they've been putting in there. And the idea is the socialists love to separate the children from their parents. The state will look after your children much better than you will. And uh, once they get control of them, then they can, they can indoctrinate them. But what I will say is what's really, really interesting is that 
uh, the last meeting we had in Brisbane a few days ago, over 50% of the people were under 35. So it, it hasn't worked with the young people who are in here today. Uh, they've got enough brains to understand and they, they've seen through the bullshit and they're, uh, they're coming here and, and trying to fix up uh, the problems that we have in this country, which is really uh, encouraging. Sorry? I said, you sure you want to know what the value is between the Aboriginal and 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 the uh, just making arms a bit easier for, uh, for someone to get a hold of, just because Sudanese probably have got. Is that going to be an issue? You know, at the moment, they're going to take the knives to people, whatever they can get their hands on, if they can have, have, they have easier access to, to uh, firearms, I guess. Is that going to be a big issue in, um, moving forward? Or? Look, um, I, <coughs> I think uh, I can tell you now 100% the criminals have all got the fire, their firearms. Funnily enough, they didn't turn up at the, at the bloody uh, buyback and hand them in uh, when all the rest of us did. Uh, and by, by the way, it wasn't a buyback, it was, uh, it was confiscation with compensation because the government never owned their guns for start of. So it's not about the guns really, you know, everyone gets sort of fixated on that because you've had 30 years of indoctrination by the left wing media telling us that guns are the problem. Uh, but you know, if you can't see the correlation between uh, gun ownership and uh, socialist uh, agendas, then you know, we've got a problem. People have got to understand there's a reason that you've been, that this country is disarmed. Just the same reason as um, Venezuela was disarmed and Germany was disarmed before uh, six or seven million people were slaughtered and Russia was disarmed before Stalin killed over 50 million people and Mao Zedong killed them. Uh, you can't oppress a, a, a country if, if, you're, uh, if you're still armed. You know, which is why America is still out. And everyone thinks there's huge gun violence in America. I've lived a long time on and off in America. And um, if I told you what, how America ranks in gun crime in the world, uh, most people think it'd be in the top five countries for gun crime. It's actually 111. So uh, America can take three cities out of there and it's like 200. So, um, you know, uh, and they're mainly criminals killing criminals for crack cocaine. So uh, I think it's, it's everyone's right to be able to protect their family. Uh, me as a, as a dad, and uh, if I can't protect my family, I don't know what I'm doing here. So, and that's not a government-given right, that's a God-given right. Uh, you know, so government, governments took away that right. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Uh, in your view, what is a greater threat to the Australian nation? Is it Islamic immigration? Or is it the media vilifying, isolating and ostracising anyone who's white and not ashamed of it? <coughs> Good point. Um, Muslim immigration, of course, is, I, I believe, a, a huge threat to us, uh, to our society. Uh, in 1970, we're 99% European. We're just below 70% European now and heading in the wrong direction. Um, now, if anyone in this room or in this country wants to live in a predominantly Asian society, a predominantly African society, a predominantly Middle Eastern society, I can tell you where to go. You can go to Peking, or you can go to, you know, Sudan, or you can go to Afghanistan, and you can live in a in that sort of society. But um, I don't believe that most of us do, and, and I don't believe anyone in this room or anyone the right thinking people in this country want to be a minority in their own country, but we are rapidly heading to being a minority in our own country, uh, where, where in terms will be dictated by other people, because it's a democracy. So we've already got seven Muslims in Parliament, but there'll be more and more, and uh, eventually you know, they'll be controlling how you live, how you, how you do everything in your life. Uh, we've seen how they do that in some other countries, and I'm not sure that most people want it. And even the people who are wishing for it and advocating for it, they find out at the end that they, they're not happy with what they got. Um, you know, the, the Venezuelans are very, very upset with what they got. 
uh, people in some of these other countries that are now complete Islamic countries and not happy with what they've got. So the media is pushing it, you're right. Uh, you know, it would be great to have a good conservative channel. We did have Sky there and they were good for a while and then they, they've lost a bit of heart. They, they won't put me on there anymore. Um, uh, channel 10 has been calling me all morning but I haven't been able to do anything. But um, it'll only be to have a crack at me, so, which they do all the time. Okay, mate. Uh, a little bit of a different topic. Come on about the family law courts. That's, yep. What's happening in the court in Hanson Mansion back in February? That there's been nothing being done at all about the family law reform. That the staff is killing themselves each day for yep. child access issues. Uh, I'm not sure you're on the actual uh, parliament side of things. What's happening with family law? Okay, um, yeah. This gentleman just asked about the family law court. That's um, a disgrace. It's uh, so uh, in favour of uh, destroying the fathers usually. Uh, I'm not saying they're all good, but there's a lot of people who are committing suicide every day. I don't know how many a day now, 21 a day or something, or 21 a week. Um, and, you know, they're, they're just using the children as a, as a lever and um, it sort of uh, it destroys people. So we've got to reform that family law board. I've talked about it in the Senate. Uh, Pauline's talked about it in the Senate, and I, you know, she and I, there's four of us sitting on one side and the rest of them on the other side again the other a uh, couple of months ago when we when they had that vote, but uh, that has to be reformed, uh, you know, and uh, you know, listen to everyone's side, not just one side. <laughs> that is? Oh, sorry. I just want to say thank you very much. Voice. Um, you brought my son here, who's just turned 18. Um, so thank you for that because um, he is about to go and he's listened, he's come off his own back. I just want to say thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I love coming down here. <laughs> I was at the last time I was here, it was Kilda. And, um, and this is what the left wing media do, by the way. I don't know how many were at St Kilda. I know a few of you are here at St Kilda, but um, there was a group of normal Australian working people, decent taxpaying Aussie, uh, listening to different people speak, and, uh, and all I heard there was Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. But 150 metres down the road, there's a bunch of lunatics with black bandanas, and they're walking around doing Nazi. I won't put my hand up because somebody will photograph me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, doing Nazi salutes and singing out Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. And uh, there were three green politicians there, and uh, so the left-wing media decided to attribute uh, that, their actions to where I was, which was complete fake. And everyone picked it up and said, "Oh, there with all the neo-Nazis and all this sort of stuff." Well, I don't know if you know, but um, in the Senate, uh, I'm the only person who put up a motion to stop funding the Palestinian Authority because they're killing innocent people. They just happen to be Jewish people in Israel. Uh, also put up another motion to... Uh... Pardon? Who's that? Do they? Oh, really? Okay. Well, that's your opinion, but it's not mine. Okay. No, that's fair enough. Uh, I'm happy to have people disagree. Everyone can have an opinion. And then, so the other one was to move the embassy from, um, you know, uh, uh, Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and uh, get the whole Senate, uh, the Liberal, Labor and the Greens all voted against that <coughs> and yet I'm the, an, uh, the anti-Semite. So um, I don't know where that was going but um, you know, the, the uh, Israelis have done a great job over there, they've sort of got enemies all around them, they're the only democracy in the whole place uh, and they've, they've created a beautiful area out of a wasteland which is pretty much a desert and of course everyone wants to take them over and want to kill them. And um, you know, what maybe you don't know is that you know, there'll be 150 rockets sent into uh, just suburbs of what mums and dads and kids. And when there's a retaliation, of course, then uh, you know, we see the retaliation of the uh, Israelis. Hi, Fraser. Hello. Hi. Thank Good you luck. for coming here. You're welcome. Um, I'm just touching on the, um, our legal sector again. We have major problems in our legal system in Australia, but Victoria in particular. I have sat in the federal, federal court in um, Melbourne and listened to um, dozens of cases where Australians were being 
given criminal charges or criminal, you know, fines for not voting or, and, and you know, that's very you know, minor. Yeah. No, <laughs> um, and yet every immigrant, clearly new immigrants that were there, every one of them had their cases dismissed without even having the charges read out. One of them had seven charges, criminal charges. And what it's doing is skewing our crime statistics to make it look like there's a balance in the, in the, you know, the criminal yeah. statistics. So we're not yet getting a true reflection of the level of crime that is happening here in Victoria. I so, so we need to deal with our legal system, the judiciary and our, our, you know, our lawyers that are, that are committing these crimes, the crimes against us. Uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly. The, um, I don't know if you heard the other day in Western Australia, Neil, uh, when they give a description of the person who's committed the offence, they're not allowed to give uh, race or ethnicity. Um, so they're going to say, okay, a guy six foot three of medium build uh, bashed and robbed somebody. Uh, well, that's actually doing the opposite of giving you an idea who it is, because if he's a six foot three Sudanese, it's a completely different thing, isn't it? But they've, they've cut that out. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's what they did. So, uh, um, I agree with you. It's, uh, it's very skewed, and um, that's, that's what they're doing. They're, they're, in for 45 years, no one has ever asked us, the people of Australia, who we want to come to this country. Uh, these governments, since Whitlam, has been stuffing their electorates with people who are going to put their hand out and we know how they're going to vote. If, I, if I'm paying you the money, there's two sorts of people in the world. And there's people who work for a living, there's people who vote for a living. These people vote for a living and those people do, so if, if I stuff my electorates full of these people who want to live off your hard work, then I know exactly how they're going to vote. They're going to vote for the guy who keeps paying that money. So, um, you know, we, we have to uh, get control of that and um, hopefully down the track, uh, if we can get enough people in there with the right um, will to do something, you know, good, solid conservatives like we're now getting to stand for us, we've got a really good chance of blocking anything that these uh, left-wing government, uh, whichever one it happens to be, and, uh, if it's short, you, know, you can pack your bags now, I think, but uh, I will be. Um, so, you know, we need to, we need to uh, get control of what's happening and we can only do it by having enough people in the, in the Senate and the lower house, but particularly the Senate. Public gathering Victoria in 22 years. Sorry? I've been a uh, public advocate yep. representing people on mental health orders in Victoria. Yep. In Victoria, when you're deemed mentally unstable, you usually get put on high dose psychiatric drugs for foreign pharmaceutical problems. For 22 years, I've been trying to get better care for them. Yep. Currently, there's about over a billion dollars being given to foreign pharmaceutical companies for toxic drugs instead of giving these people proper care yep. with good nutrition, a place to be in the community, and just common decency. When these people are walking around, Everybody sees them all drugged up. For 22 years, I've been trying to get a better care. So I think the federal government should wake up. And uh, I, I, I agree with you, and I think the government is awake to it. That big farmer is uh, big money people, and they donate heavily to uh, big government. And um, doctors don't talk about cures anymore; it's only about treatment, because that's where the money is. So, uh, you know, I agree. You know, if, if we can keep on selling the drugs. Pharmacy, big pharma is very happy and unfortunately uh, the people who are on those drugs are not getting the care that they should. And that's another battle. And by the way, you know, there's about a million battles, you know, including family law courts and all that. And the more that you try and attack, uh, the wider you try and spread yourself. It's like a shotgun. Uh, you're missing out on the things that are the greatest threat to us right now, which is Muslim immigration, Chinese takeover by stealth, and uh, then becoming a socialist country. And so if they're our first battles, which as far as I'm concerned, they're my first battle, uh, if we can win some of those, then we can get on to the, the other things, you know, and one will cure the other. Yeah. 
huge problem. I agree. Yeah. Okay. They're outside of that. That's a good place for them. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks for coming, Dan. Um, well, just wanted to ask you follow the political system and how it works. What's your short term plan in the next six months and how can we help as supporters? Um, the short term plan is get the party registered in the next week or so. Um, get as many people as we can on board to help us. Um, you know, like with flyers and uh, you know, doing the at the polling booth. By the way, the polling booth is the best place to be if, if anyone is going to volunteer to hand out how to vote cards is, uh, and put up a few forfeits, which are even more important, uh, is the pre-polling. Australia now is around about 40% last election pre-poll. It's growing every year. You know, 20 years ago it would be 5%, now it's up to 40%, and this next election maybe 45%. So you get a lot of bang for your buck because each, each electorate only maybe has one or possibly two pre-polling areas, so you only need a couple of people to cover them, and you'll get the, you'll get a lot of cut through. Uh, where we're winning a lot is uh, on the social media. I can show you something in there that uh, this last week, um, the average, uh, I think Pauline had uh, how many was it? Was it uh, engagements and. With, uh, yeah, we were 588,000 engagements. She was the next to us. So, um, you know, we were nearly five times as high as uh, the next politician in Australia is following our social media. So, as much as you can, you know, share as much as you can because that's where you win. Uh, I don't know if you know that um, uh, three months out from the Brazilian election, uh, Bolsonaro, the name Bolsonaro, no one knew it. And he's now the president. And he did it all on social media, just like Trump did. Uh, Trump got a lot more coverage on, on uh, mainstream media, mainly to pull him apart. But you know, any any publicity is okay publicity. But Bolsonaro had nothing, and he did it all on social media. So we can win seats on social media. You know, but we can win the thing on on social media so long as everyone's sharing as much as you can. Senator Rani, yes. on the social media front, uh, what can we what what can the government do about the uh, the liberal bias on social media? When I, when I tweeted on, uh, on today, when I looked for tweets on today and news on today, I used Google and I typed in Fraser and Ingraben and the first 10 things I saw were, this is where all the Nazis are, are, are conglomerating, yeah. go there and strike down the Nazis. Why are they able to use these platforms without government regulation? Because the social media companies aren't doing it, they're banning people with dissenting opinions that isn't in the majority. What can the government do? As much as I'm a free speech advocate and I believe everyone has a right to talk, people who are openly and dishonestly slandering Australian citizens should not be given these platforms. What can the government do about it? What can you do about it? Good point. Um, what can I do? Uh, I'm, I'm with you. I think I'm one person in there right now. I will say that I'm getting more and more coming on my side uh, who've got a little bit of ticker every now and then. Some of them have now been booted from part, they will be booted, like um, Barry O'Sullivan, for instance. He and I got the Royal Commission into banking going. Uh, for his for doing that, he's now not been pre-selected, so he's finished. And so the left wing in, the, in their party, which is most of their party now, and the Liberals and Mats, uh, they'll just flick you as soon as you, uh, you know, maybe vote your voice. Uh, as far as that goes, and we're all Nazis, well, uh, I've met a whole lot of people here. I'm still yet to meet the first Nazi here, but um, maybe he's hiding in the back. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think most, uh, most people who have a, an opinion, and, uh, and as I said, the people, I've had 34 hotels in my life. And I've spoken to hundreds of thousands of people in, in public bars, in, in cattle areas, in regional areas, and, and in the cities. And uh, I can tell you now, you, you're with a, a huge group because if I walk into any of those bars now and there's a bar full of guys and I say, who here wants to get out of the United Nations, I guarantee you get 100% hands with The same with uh, who here wants Muslim immigration to stop, 100% you'll get. Who here wants uh, no more foreign aid to countries that, that use it to buy um, helicopters that may attack us one day, 
you get 100%. And that's what the Australian people, the decent, hard-working Australian people believe. And uh, somebody said, oh, you're not talking for anyone in Australia. So look, I'm not talking for everyone. All I'm talking for is the people that I grew up with and I've worked with uh, all my bloody life and uh, the decent people who pay their taxes. So I'm not talking for, for the leafy suburbs in bloody Turak and wherever else they happen to be. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a voice, hopefully, for the people that uh, I've listened to and grown up with and worked with all my life. Thank you. I mean, is that it? I'm um, Fraser, um, you were talking about uh, projects to reroute water to create new farmland. Yeah. And that's just the kind of national project Australia needs. We need a large national project to unite people. People are divided. People yeah. are disenfranchised. People have got no sort yeah. of goal to head towards. And that's just the kind of pool which will set the country straight. How would you go about um, initiating that? A great question, and um, I'll just tell you, uh, Leon Ashby here is the, the designer of the scheme that we have. Uh, it's like the Bradfield scheme. I don't know if you know the Bradfield scheme. It was the Tully, the Kerbet, and the Vertican running into those into that dam, and then the Hell's Gate dam, and then being quite through the Great Dividing Range, which is, by world terms is just a little hill, into the arid western country. I come from a cattle station. I've watched all our cattle die in droughts and, uh, and sheep die. And so uh, we, can, we can water that inland, we can create masses of wealth, and it's easy, it's, it's, not, it's not impossible. And by the way, uh, Leon's scheme is all gravity fed, so there's no pumping. I don't know if you know, but if you pump water, it costs you about $25 a megalitre to pump it. So if you can do it without that, then it's free, and it will be running in 2,000 years' time. Uh, in uh, 2000, and, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 213, BC, Rome built its first aqueduct, which is gravity fed and is still running today. So you can run water forever once you've got um, a, like a one in 3,000 fall, which is about the average of most rivers in Australia. Uh, and these dams on the Walsh, the Tate, the Ironsley, um, you know, the Flinders, uh, there's, there's so many places we can put in beautiful dams. Um, I was in California about three or four months ago. They have 10 million acres under irrigation in absolute desert. Not, not beautiful soil like we have in Queensland and northern New South Wales, but desert. And they've got these 10 million acres that we drove all the way through and every paddock, everything, there's, there's uh, grapes and there's walnuts and avocados and lettuce and people working in every one of those fields, packing, planting or, or um, picking. And uh, it's employed hundreds of thousands of people and it's creating a huge amount of wealth for California. I don't know if you know that California is now the fifth largest economy in the world and one of the reasons is it has that agriculture. And we could be doing exactly the same, employing Australians who would be self-sufficient for food for the rest of our life. We're now importing so much rubbish from all these other countries. Uh, you know, I mean, Australia's the largest island in the world with the cleanest oceans in the world, and yet we import 75% of our seafood. That's just a madness. Everyone around the world is laughing at us while we're buying their rubbishy fish out of the meat on the so I think, I, I, I don't know, but uh, it's getting a bit warm in here and I'm sure you guys have got somewhere to go to, so uh, thank you very much for coming and uh, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Quick, uh, okay. could, could you put your you know, details on those lists, the, the green things, so we can... Keep in contact with you. Uh, Fraser's going to do some interviews now. But uh, the interviews. But as you walk out, just put your name there and we'll talk to you more when we contact you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Hey, sorry, old boy. Somebody was just going to do a quick interview. That's all right.
Come on. Yeah, what, 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 what does that achieve? Well, hey, can you take block. this bloke out? So what the fuck was he? He's got... No, get rid of him. He's fine. Get the police. So you want to do something with his face. You're not putting an egg on my face. You're putting it everywhere else. You're trying to get his face. You're trying to get his face. He has made a mistake. But he's got to be fucking worked properly, mate. Let's get the rest of it. You have a safe boss. You're being a missing. What he's doing is for your future. You had no right to assault Fraser. Did he get Fraser? Yes. Hey, would you mind just filming this for me? I'm going to get the rest of Jones out. Yeah. Yeah, good to see you. 